Uh, I guess I started um, quite a few years ago uh, with the beginnings of, of introducing blended learning into into the work into my teaching, um, and by blended learning, hang on, I'm not getting a. By blended learning, I'm talking about the seamless amalgamation of the face-to-face -face with the with the online, uh, and so and getting that balance right has been really important, uh, and making sure that the online refers to the face-to-face -face and the face-to-face -face refers back to the online has been something that that I've uh, tried to develop. Um, part of my my reasoning for, for doing this was initially partly to, to meet the uh, in my increasingly digital, na digital, digital native students, but also um, to find ways to combat the steadily increasing resource constraints that, that I was facing in, in my teaching. And I wanted to explore whether using the online el elements would, would enable uh, me to deliver a course to students that not only didn't compromise their learning, but actually increased their learning opportunities. Um, so I started by making some um, small online elements that I made available through the, through, uh, the My Uni system. Um, a lot of these, I began to integrate them and uh, develop them and integrate them using My Uni. Um, some of them were standalone topics, but they always referred to, back to what was going on in the face-to-face -face teaching sessions. Um, a lot of these were process-based or process-focused uh, because I found those were the things, the skills that students often needed in order to progress. It wasn't necessarily, it, it was, yeah, those things that they could revisit. Um, and relearn. They often modelled the behaviour and the thinking that, um, so very much like listening to Jamie Oliver talking about how he's cooking and going through the steps that he's thinking, trying to explicate to my students the, the goings on in my mind when I was doing the activity that I wanted them to then do. I've lost a fair bit of weight since then, so um, these are still out there in the ether because I reuse these. Um, so building up that initial resource bank was very important. Um, when I look at the current course that I'm teaching, um, and this sort of brings me to where I am now, I took up the VC's challenge uh, from the Beacon of Enlightenment to rethink my timetable and you know, how much further could I push the blended learning. I looked for opportunities to flip my courses and deliver more online content, but to counterbalance that by, um, by increasing opportunities for the small group sessions, for one-on-one -on -one with myself, and, and students um, as a counterbalance to, to shifting things online. Um, so when I threw it all up in the air, I, I guess in, to capture, it, was a, it is a small class, uh, 44 students um, in architectural engineering uh, and a lot of this, uh, what I'm about to tell you, uh, is based on a survey to which about or just less than half the class responded. So it's a, not a huge amount of data, but nevertheless there's some interesting conclusions which I'd like to talk about. Um, so when I threw it all up in the air, it landed and it looked somewhat horrifyingly a little like this. Um, so the, I guess the dark grey squares are things that I felt had a good match with being online uh, and the lighter grey squares were the things that I really felt needed to be captured in face-to-face -face, uh, teaching. Um, and then there's a whole lot of connections that I was trying to make. When that then rationalised itself into something that looked a little more like this, and ultimately, that grew into the timetable that the students... Sorry. The clicker's not working. The timetable that the students saw, which was something that looks a little like this. So within that, we can see um, the first column is a lot of the face-to-face... Uh, the -face, uh, the, I guess the dark blue, the darker blue, are the face-to-face mass classes. There's a, the second column uh, uh, a lot of, is a lot of the online content and the paler blue are the, the integrated uh, small additional small group sessions. Um, when it got to sort of week four, week five, I started to think I'm not entirely sure that I'm happy with how this is going and I really wanted to test the water. One of the big things that I was missing from having moved so much of my uh, lecture content time online was I, I was missing that feedback loop that you get from students and I started to think, I think maybe I've gone too far, I've pushed the balance and, it, it, and it's tipped over. So from my perspective, things were, although when I was asking students face to face, how were things going, they were all really happy. So I thought, well, let's, let's test and see what's going. So I, I ran a, a mid-semester survey um, and I'm not going to, a lot of this captured 
things that I was very much expecting. So I'm not going to focus on all of the, the top part because ultimately the nitty gritty was revealed in the open ended questions towards the end. Um, so in the, the short answers to the, to the question, you know, what uh, have they enjoyed their exper experience? A lot of this reads like a, a textbook of, you know, reasons why you would go to bl get blended learning in terms of, you know, the ability to uh, have versatility, to be able to do things in their own time. I loved the, the, the bottom quote, the large one, I'm hoping you can read it, but uh, it, that it's a variety of teaching methods to cater for all learning styles, which was just like, yes, straight out of it. It's like, it's like I fed somebody that answer, um, but I hadn't. Uh, but it was just, it was amazing to see all of the stuff that you'd see in the literature was there revealed in, in the responses to this survey. Then I went on and asked, well, how could it be improved? Now, clearly there was one dissenter who felt that having it removed would be the ideal situation. Um, but the next big thing was the, they, that they were feeling very much what I was feeling, that there was a lack of face-to-face -face content in, in, the, in the lectures. So, I did, and that was something that I've addressed in the second half of the semester. Um, but the other thing that I started to notice was um, the, so I guess the colours are just me theming different ideas, um, was that a lot of things came from the students, like they were, they were I things, student owned things, like I have a prior commitment or I needed help, you know, or, or I need to be forced to watch this or you know, so they weren't really able yet as first year students to, they didn't have sort of that capacity to, to drive themselves always, to motivate themselves to, to engage with that online content if there wasn't um, a carrot. Um, so again, when looking at the features of the course that helped them to learn, so look, this is looking at the whole course, the small group face-to-face -face sessions were, were hugely uh, positively commented on. Um, the face, -to face tutorials, again, another thing that, that students um, relished. The online was present. The face to face with teachers and sometimes the teaching individuals, uh, as well as the online lectures. So I guess what this showed me a picture of is that the blended is definitely the way to go. That you are, once you're capturing uh, possibilities there for everybody, uh, at different learning styles, the ability for people to go back and, and reflect um, and it, but it's how, as a teacher, do you get that balance correct? Um, when I looked at the things that were hint asked students what was hindering their learning, um, I, I mentioned again, and this is really where I'd like to take my, um, my, the breakout session, is looking at how can we better support these sort of student-owned things. How, um, so, yeah. Um, so things like they would f forget to check that things were there. Um, that they felt that there were too many online lectures. So again, I hadn't quite got that balance correct. This was a really interesting one. They felt that the lectures were too long. None of the lectures were, was any longer than a conventional face-to-face -face lecture. But I've sat and watched them and they feel really long when you're watching them, um, when you're just sitting there with you in front of the... So that for me was a really big lesson. From that, I, I need to break these down into smaller digestible chunks if I'm going to deliver it purely um, online. So, yeah, students need to adapt, staff need to adapt in terms of our learning and teaching styles as we're moving uh, towards a, bl a more blended environment. So I guess um, for me, looking, as I mentioned before, the, for the online lectures is one thing that I'd really like to, to address, um, keeping those contents shorter uh, and have an engagement. And I think Colin's gonna later talk to us about ways in which you can hook your students and give them carrots. Um, yeah, so when, uh, carrots to, to engage with the online content, that is not just giving them carrots. Um, so yeah, when I have my breakout session, people that come and talk with me, I'd like to look at that expectation and scaffolding that for, su for success for students. How can we um, enable students to engage with the online content in positive ways? So thank you.